Hey everyone, and welcome to this video series about cPanel from Solid Shell Security. Uh, this episode, we're going to be talking about the introduction to cPanel and how to install cPanel. Uh, so, first thing is let's go to the cPanel website and talk about a few things. Ideally, you want to install cPanel on a dedicated server. If you go to VPS, consider getting a Zen or a KVM. The only reason I mention that is so you can use the advanced partitioning, and this allows you to configure and set up your system so you can have everything isolated. The reason I say this is uh, I've seen servers several times they get filled up on a partition and it crashes the entire system. Um, sometimes MySQL, well actually MySQL does sit underneath this partition, and if it gets too big, you know, I'm using this for an example, MySQL will completely crash and the websites will go down. Uh, the same thing can happen should your home directory not be mounted on its own. If it's not mounted separately and it gets filled up, it's going to cause your entire server to pretty much crash because it's not going to be able to write, you know, say a TMP or other things like that. So it's really important to make sure you isolate your system with this partitioning scheme. Now you can set the values to whatever you feel like. This is pretty much your recommended values. Um, personally, you could put MySQL under its own mount and make that an SSD setup. You could put the entire OS and its binaries on an SSD. You know, there's many different options. So there's a lot to think about when you buy a server and how you want to configure and set it up. Uh, you kind of can do this with an OpenVZ, but you really can't. Uh, so you're really better off just buying a dedicated server with the advanced abilities to configure and set everything up how you want to. Uh, so the other thing is about cPanel is it's very, very picky about how it does everything. So if you're going to add IPs, remove IPs, do management, maintenance and stuff, you need to understand cPanel and read the documentation and do it their way. If you don't, IPs will go missing, uh, sites will go offline, things won't work correctly, everything has to be done by their guidelines. If you don't, you can have issues and problems. So read the documentation, and this video series will talk about how to do a lot of stuff, how to maintain files, edit files, configurations. So you do everything cPanel's way. That way, you know, you don't have IPs going AWOL, running away, and sites going down. And clients calling you up saying, what's wrong, what's wrong? And this will also teach you in this series how to prevent clients from calling you up, needing stuff done because, you know, you've already taken care of it. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that with cPanel, there's not a one-way configuration that works. There's several different ways to install things, so the whole idea of this video series is to walk you through a lot of the basics so you know what you're doing and how to do it. So that's pretty much the idea. Uh, pretty much installing cPanel is, is all you gotta do is you know CD to home. You can actually CD to root wherever you want to. They just use home as the main directory. And then just copy and paste this command. If you have a license IP, then it'll automatically detect that, pick it up when it calls home. If not, you can just go ahead and run this and you end up getting the 15 day IP, assuming the IP that you're on hasn't been used in a while. And I've already got an installation running in the background. As you can see right now, it's currently compiling PHP. But the install on cPanel, depending on your hardware, can pretty much take anywhere between 15 minutes to up to an hour. It really depends on your memory, the, the disk speed. Um, it really depends. So during this time, typically what you want to do is grab a nice coffee, uh, play with a cat, get some catnip, find some kittens outside, you know. You could maybe go find some alley cats. I'm pretty sure they'd pay a lot for that catnip weed. So I mean, yeah, you're pretty much just going to sit around, multitask, do something else while this thing installs because it's going to take a while. And once we're done with that, we'll come back and we will bring up the the web interface and walk through the settings, the layout, and cover how to correctly install and configure everything. 
and how to optimize. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button at the top and because we're going to have a lot of videos coming out. So you want to make sure you stay on top of that. If you don't have a YouTube account, go ahead and give away your information so Google knows all about you and then hit subscribe. We're worth it. So I'm going to pause this video right now. I'm going to come back once the panel is done installing. Okay, we're back. Uh, as you can tell, uh, cPanel has been installed and it actually only took 36 minutes. So it's about in the mid range. So once you have cPanel up, you can go to the IP. And as you can tell, we've got default install. So we know it's installed. So we go to the WHM login. Once again, it's IP slash WHM. Or you can go directly to you know the actual part number at the top. Either way works. Hit login and so you log in, you're going to get the uh, license agreement. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, I agree. Um, then you're going to fill in your address. We're just going to do something you know, simple. I mean, you can go through and fix this stuff later. So we're just going to do something quick, simple. Um, all that looks good. Go to the next step. And as you can tell, it's already found the IP addresses and it's listed them in. So this is good. If there's other IP addresses, you know, we can add them later, but it's found the current ones installed. Um, if you're going to host DNS on the actual server, you can pick the one you want to run on. Um, preferably, I just use bind. Um, I've used it a lot, so I just stick with it. If you want to learn other ones or you have specific needs, why you want to use one of these, you can use them. Uh, everything's pretty much automatic, so you don't have to. Um, I'm just familiar, more familiar with the one at top, so I kind of stick with it. But it's more of a matter of preference. If you're not going to run DNS on this server, you can go ahead and disable it. So, I mean, this that's if you're going to run uh, remote DNS servers like NS1, NS2, NS3, and so on on different servers, and you want to link to them, you just disable it on the main hosting server to save resources and stuff. Um, so all this is good, all this is good. Just going to go ahead and automatically, you know, add the stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and just do that anyway, just so it configures and sets everything up correctly. So it's going ahead and installing and configuring the name servers, so that's done. Uh, same thing with FTP. Um, preferably, I just stick with pure FTP. Uh, if you really want to make use of a lot of, like, add-ons and modifications, uh, Pro FTP is actually a pretty good choice. It's really more of a trade-off between the two. Um, from my understanding, though, with Pro FTP, you can configure uh, security add-ons easier and connect better with Pro FTP. That's probably changed now. Uh, but personally, I just stick with Pure FTP just because it's less on memory and and tends to perform better in my personal choices, but it's not as configurable. It's a trade-off. Uh, mail server configuration, it's pretty much the same way. You can pick whichever one you prefer, whichever one you've known. Um, I've stuck with Dovecot over the, over the years, so I just tend to use that one instead and stick with it. Um, now, if you want to protect against um, brute force attacks and such, you can go ahead and configure um, by enabling this. If you want to configure more advanced options and actually configure, you know, the timeouts, how many trials to hit and stuff, you can do that. Uh, I'm just going to disable this because personally I prefer not to let the cPanel system do it. I just let another service check the logins and and block the attack. So I typically just disable it that just so I have one last thing running. And you want to go ahead and use the system quotas since this will be a shared host and setup. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that and finish it. So, and once again, we've got other features that we can go ahead and install. I'm just going to go ahead and do save settings. Um, but it's basically my, when it comes down to these features and everything go ahead and research them, see what they do, see if you want them, see if you want to use it. That's basically what you want to do. Just don't enable stuff you don't know what you're doing. So this 
It is the basic installation, basic look of WHM. This is the new interface look. It's changed finally. It's become our touch screen friendly, so it's a little easier to use on the go now for those of us who use their phones to log into stuff. Uh, so, just to quickly show off the little screen. So, this is the server configuration. Uh, you can change the root password. We'll go into the tweak settings and all this other stuff on how to configure WHM cPanel in the next video. But for now, I just want to basically show you this. As you can tell, this is where we put the, the test email in. So you can go ahead and rename that to whatever you want to do. And you can reconfigure a lot of those settings here. By Technically, the defaults are fine. You're not going to have an issue with the defaults. But just showing you that you can actually change anything. So you've made a mistake, you can just go back and do that. And this is, uh, let's see. We don't have any plugins right now, but if we had plugins, we'd have a little plugin option at the very bottom here, which would take you to the plugins. Uh, we won't touch on the plugins just yet, but we will go through all the plugins that you can use in the later video series. But for now, I just wanted to basically show you this is pretty much what the WHM uh, layout is going to look like. You can pretty much do anything you do in command line here. Like if we clicked up here at the load averages, we're going to get a printout of all the services running like if we were pretty much to be running like top you know we'd be able to see that and you can also kill processes by the username so if we have a user that's you know abusing resources we can go in here select their name and hit kill user processes that's assuming we have you know PHP and running to you know as a user and also if we have CVXC running as well to you know run everything as that user. So just showing you that we do have a lot of the command line interface commands in WHM. So you can pretty much do anything you'd actually really need to on a basic level from within WHM. So you know we can add IPs through WHM which you really need to do. Like from networking setup here you know we can change host name, manage the name, server IPs, redirecting here real quick but just showing you that you know we can in fact you know configure stuff as you can tell we've got zones there we can always go in and edit them but so pretty much everything you can pretty much do is your WHM and not really have much need to really have to use command line unless you really absolutely have to I mean you still will but most of the time you can pretty much just do the stuff through WHM so that pretty much concludes this video episode. So we've talked about how to install cPanel. We've talked about the basics of configuring and how to configure and how to access the services. So the next video we are going to talk about actually configuring and securing. So stay tuned.